Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, pulling everything together, we've done in the last couple of videos to value Roblox, and pretty freaky, I think, from a valuation perspective after I've pulled this all together. But if you didn't watch the first two videos, we build out kind of a revenue schedule, have them growing from about, mm, about a billion of sales in 2020 up to about three and a half billion by 2030. And expenses, we have significant improvement in margins so right now right expenses are vastly outweighing revenue and having that go down to about 80 percent by 2030. so i've linked this all up and the results i mean i think I'm trying to remember what the the whack was i used for roblox that we calculated but let's say we set it at 10 percent even just for now and we have our little sensitivity table here um the way this all flows through, you can see like we have, you know, decent revenue growth. We assume 2022 is the same as 2021. So we're assuming COVID, all this acceleration is just going to like stay flat for a year. It's basically just pull forward and then they're going to grow from there. We have all their costs except for COGS. COGS are going up and that's because they're shifting more towards App Store and Google Play as a source of revenue, which is automatically 30% hit to their cogs. So we have that actually slowly increasing over time. Developer exchange fees. We have this actually going back down closer to the historical average. This is something they can control. They can set how much can be redeemed or not redeemed, like what that rate is for developers. So this is a piece they can control and definitely have downward pressure on. Infrastructure, right? This cost is their basically their hosting costs for their servers, things of that nature. So it will go down as they scale. R&D have this dropping, right? So I guess what I'm saying is we have all their costs basically decreasing except for their cost of goods sold. That's the one thing we have increasing just because their revenue is shifting towards that and they have no control over it. Everything else, right? We've held CapEx flat. We've had depreciation slowly creep up towards 80% and then held working capital flat. With all these assumptions, which, you know, when I was pulling together the revenue schedule, I thought, you know, this is pretty fair analysis. We looked at Right, we looked at you know daily average bookings for U.S., Canada, rest of the world. Had some assumptions there. Had you know some assumptions around total number of users added to the platform. Calculated that out, and you know we get a valuation between three billion and nine billion. Their current currently market cap is fifty-five billion. So this would suggest you know like a ten-dollar stock price. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I was like, maybe my revenue is just way off. So I just was like, let's make a bull case where we just keep revenue growing like crazy. So we have, you know, we just decrease the revenue growth by 5% a year after 2021. So this gets us, you know, growing 60, 60, 50, 50, 40, 40, 30, you know what I mean? Crazy growth gets you to $36 billion in sales. Cost of goods, you know, we could actually tweak this, right? Maybe we actually say, hey, let's do this. And they're going to somehow defeat Apple, right? They're not going to have to pay these crazy developer fees. They're going to get people buying stuff through their platform. Okay. So cost of goods improves. Developer fees, same thing. We have it improving back to historical levels. Infrastructure improving. R&D improving. g &A improving. Sales and marketing improving, right? Everything's improving here. And then stock-based comp basically um, as a percent of revenue goes to zero. And right, we get a 27 to $100 billion. But I mean, if we think about the risk in this, this is definitely on the riskier end. Probably something close to like a 10, you, no, probably closer to like a 15. What am I talking about? And like, let me open up my, my WAC file real quick. We can see what they're problem with their WAC is I think they haven't been public that long, so you don't really have like a super good WAC. But yeah, just based off how long they've been public, WAC 14%. If you throw a 14% WAC in here, great, you get a $25 billion valuation, and that's with them growing an insane amount. Revenue grows 36% in the next decade, or 36 times, sorry. Like, that's just silly. That doesn't happen. I mean, maybe it does, but they've even said they've started to see things slow coming out of COVID. So 
to think that they're going to continue this growth for the next decade, probably not very likely. And if we look pre-pandemic, right, they only grew 56% here. Like that's, that's a really good number. You know, the pandemic jumped it up to 80%, but pre-pandemic, they weren't growing at these 60s of what we have to kind of forecast out. The only alternative, right, is like you have R&D drop to like, you know what I mean? You're just like, okay, we're not going to have any R&D costs. GNA is going to actually increase or decrease even more. Sales and marketing, I mean, that's already basically going away. Infrastructure, somehow they're going to, I mean, they've, I don't, you know, that's kind of like a fixed cost to support the revenue. Developer fees, maybe they can somehow get this back down to 20% and just hold it there, right? Maybe if they can do some of these crazy things, which still just seems crazy to me, and I, I don't think it's very likely, right? Then all of a sudden, okay, you're at a $30 billion valuation. You're still not at their current valuation. I don't see the long-term growth. And, you know, obviously I've never used Roblox. So um, I've just read the 10K and read the Q or the, the S1, um, not the 10K, and just kind of read about the platform. And it's a digital world with avatars and you buy coins in game and pay to do little in-game things and decorate your avatar, right? Like, that's really cool. Is that $55 billion cool? I don't think so especially when your revenue is trading at a 55 times revenue multiple, even more than that, right? Probably 60 times. It's just crazy. You're not even cash flow positive. You're bleeding money. And you're going to become a $40 billion company. Like, I don't know, to just justify, not even justify, right? To almost justify your current market valuation. I think this is a interesting one. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be this far off and love to, you know, if you have any thoughts or comments, leave them below. Maybe I'm just missing something super critical to this business. And if I am like, let me know. Um, and I'll definitely update this to, to factor that in, but, um, it just seems vastly over overvalued to me. Um, I've seen some bad ones, but I haven't seen one where like I made reasonable revenue and, expense estimates and, you know, got a valuation that's, you know, if you throw 14% in here, right? 2 billion. Um, I mean, you're, you're pricing in a ton of growth. That's probably not going to materialize. It'll be interesting to see how 2021 shakes out. This is just assuming Q1 multiplies by four, but they're already saying things are softening. So in reality, they're probably going to land, you know, closer to 2020 than probably this 2021 number. But thanks for tuning in. Like I said, let me know if you have any questions, comments, thoughts. Love to hear them. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll be staying away from this one. That's for sure. Uh, thanks for tuning in.